my channel. I'm Andrea and I've been a Pilates instructor for over 31 years and a certified massage therapist. And a lot of people that come see me have lower back issues. So I've devoted this workout just to lower back strengthening and stretching. So a lot of times lower back weakness or pain has to do with weakness in the abs, weakness in the glutes. So we're gonna be focusing on that. And also has to do with tension in the hip flexor in the quads, in the hamstrings. So we're going to do some releasing, we're gonna do some strengthening. So when you're ready, just need a mat, some soft surface, uh, preferably a thick mat, and then just carefully come on to your back. So scoot down on the mat so that your head is on the mat, palms to the mat. We're just gonna start with some basic pelvic tucks, which is a great way to release lumbar tension. So your feet are hip distance. And then just relax your hands as you exhale, begin to tilt your pelvis towards the ceiling and push your lower back down into the mat, exhaling. So hold there for about five seconds, squeezing your tummy muscles. Then on your inhale, just relax and notice how your pelvis automatically rocks back to neutral. No arching there, just neutral. Do that again, exhale to an imprinted spine, tucking the pelvis. Lift up on the pelvic floor just slightly, like you're trying to squeeze your way in, lifting up on pelvic floor. Inhale, relax, rocking back to neutral. So it's a very basic exercise, pelvic tilts. Keep doing this, so exhale as you tuck your pelvis under, squeeze your tummy, keep this going, holding. So we're getting some mobility in the pelvis. Relax back to neutral. Again, exhale, imprint the spine. As we bring some mobility to the pelvis, this starts to free up the lower back. A lot of times we get a little bit frozen in the pelvis and the hips. Relax. And this puts pressure on the lower back muscles. Again, exhale, imprinted spine. Squeeze your tummy, tilt pelvis towards the navel, holding there. And relax back to neutral. Let's do this just a couple more times. So exhaling, Holding your imprint for about five seconds, lifting up on the pelvic floor, feel lumbar release, feel realignment in the body. Inhale, relax back into neutral. One more of these. Exhale, tuck the pelvis, squeeze your abdominal muscles to create this. Inhale and relax, awesome. Bring your arms out nice and wide. You're gonna keep your feet down as you slowly drop the knees towards me exhaling. So we're just going to bring some mobility now into the hips. Inhale as you bring your knees through the center and exhale knees drop away. So notice the feet stay down. If your arm lifts off a little bit that's okay. Back through the center. Other side exhale. So just rocking the knees side to side while keeping the feet down. This begins to mobilize the hips a little bit. Inhale knees back through the center and exhale as you drop the knees towards the back. Let's do one more time through. Knees through the center, and then drop the knees towards me, keeping your feet down, feeling the stretch down into hips and low back. Inhale slowly through the center, and exhale knees to the back wall slowly. Back to the center, take your time, bring your palms down by your side, by your hips. Lift your hips, land them softly, just to make sure that everything's back in alignment. Now again, you're gonna tilt your pelvis towards the navel, feeling your spine go into imprint, and feeling your lower abdominals engage. From there, while keeping your hips really stable, bring the front knee in towards the chest, squeezing your abdominal muscles, exhale. Inhale, land the foot softly to the mat. Now the back leg comes in. Inhale, back down. Now you can make these smaller, you can make them bigger, what feels good in your body, but I want the movement to come from those lower abs. So exhaling as you bring it in. Inhale to tap, keep breathing, keep doing this. Maintain your pelvic tuck, so that means you're feeling your lower back pressing into the mat the whole time. Don't let your lower back unload. You're keeping that pelvic tuck, taking all the pressure off of your lower back. If you are still feeling pressure in your lower back, you can put a rolled up towel underneath your hips. Feeling the low abs create this and the back leg. Beautiful, let's just do four more of these. 
and then we're gonna progress. But as we progress, if it doesn't feel good in your body, if you're in a current like red zone, inflammation zone, as we progress, it might not feel good. So you can just continue with this, making sure you're keeping that pelvic tuck, bringing strength into those lower abs, supportive foundational muscles. All right, now the next one, you're gonna either bring a rolled up towel or your hands under your buttocks, not your lower back, that's important, under your buttocks. Tilt your pelvis again towards the ceiling, pushing your lower back down towards the mat. You know you're right because you feel your lower abs switch on. Then carefully bring one knee to tabletop and then the other. If that doesn't feel good, go back to where we were with toe taps with the feet to the mat. Toe taps this way, front toe taps the mat, exhaling, inhale back to tabletop. And now the back leg, <sighs> inhale up. So keep this going with your hands or towel underneath your hips. This is decompressing the lower back, taking pressure off the lower back, but don't get lazy, right? Don't rely on the hands or your towel. You have to maintain that pelvic tuck to keep those lower abs switched on. So like I said, you know you're right because those lower abs are feeling it. If you're not feeling it, you might need to tuck your pelvis a little bit more. Big out breath as you tap, in breath up. So the out breath is important because that's gonna really help you to activate deep into the TA, transverse abdominal muscles. This is your deepest layer of core and it acts like a corset of strength. So it wraps around to your lower back and it's activated through your expiration, right? Through that out breath. So make sure you're getting that full strong out breath each and every time we tap the toe. So you can take a little break anytime you need to really feeling those lower abs start to switch on now. So remember, lower back pain a lot of times has to do with weakness in the abs. So we want to strengthen here as these are foundational muscles that work for our body all the time in all of our daily movements. So if you are feeling like your form is suffering, you might need to take a little break. Let's do four more of these. Make sure it all comes from those lower abs. Four and up. Three, and up, two more, and up, last one, good job, bring both feet down, bring your hands out from underneath, and just decompress for a moment, so bring the knees into the chest, if you want a full spinal release, you can even lift your head and shoulders off the mat and hug behind your thighs, full tuck, or keep your head down, if that feels better. Take a big deep breath here. Exhale, let go of any tension. All right, lower your head and shoulders, bring the palms down to the mat. Your heels are hip distance apart, toes straight ahead. Exhale to an imprinted spine. So really push your lower back down, 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 tuck your pelvis. Now you're gonna unravel each vertebrae slowly, like you're gently lifting a string of pearls off the floor. Take your time. Articulation is so good for the spine. And then help yourself all the way up into a full hip bridge. So try not to look at me in this position. Now imagine like you're squeezing a ball between the knees. If you do have a ball or a pillow at home, you can also add that to this workout. So we're really strengthening here the glute, the hamstrings, and the lower back. This is one of the best exercises for low back rehab, the hip bridge. We're just gonna hold here. Can you relax your hands, palms up, so your hands are basically worthless and the work goes into the glute, the hammies, and even into those uh, so strong supportive lower back muscles. You're holding here, holding for four, squeeze the glute, three, two, excellent. Now slowly lower the hips halfway and exhale, lift your hips all the way up, holding here for five, squeeze a pencil under your glute, three, two, one, lower halfway, inhale. Exhale, lift high as you can. This is great concentration work. Squeeze your pencil, three, two, one, lower halfway, inhale. Exhale, lift high as you can. Squeeze your glute, elongate through the back of the neck. Feel that stretch in the neck, holding. And lower halfway, let's do two more of these. This is very effective in the body. Lifting, lifting, squeeze your imaginary ball, holding three, two, and lower halfway. 
And once again, lifting up, 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 high as you can, holding for three, two, bring your palms down, and then articulate back down like you're pushing each vertebrae back down, gently lying those string of pearls back down on the floor. Your tailbone or your sacrum is the last to land, and then hug the knees into the chest, maybe rock it out. Very strengthening exercise. All right, so we're going to do dead bugs next, which is a great exercise to rebalance the body. Reach your arms up to the sky. You can put the towel underneath your bum here if you like or not. Lift one knee and then the other tabletop. Let's all imprint, push your lower back down, tuck your pelvis under. It's simply opposite arm to leg, extend away, exhaling. Inhale to bring it back in. Other side. Keep this going. If this is too much, you're gonna go back to that previous exercise of the toe taps with your feet on the mat. Okay, you can always progress to this if it feels like it's too much in your back. So it's opposite arm and leg away and bring it back in. Maintain your imprint. If you're having trouble keeping that imprint, put that towel underneath your hips to keep pushing your lower back down and towards the mat. Exhale as you extend away. Inhale back in. So this exercise is great for rebalancing because a lot of times imbalance in the body is what brings issues and injuries. So it's the strengthening, the postural realignment, and the balancing benefits of Pilates that helps to heal lower back issues and other injuries in the body. So this is a great one for rebalancing. Exhale as you tap. Inhale back in. Let's go four more of these. And up. Three. And up. Last two. And up. Last one. Good job. Hug it in. Have a pause. All right, when you're ready, you're just gonna come on to your side and we're gonna work clam openers, which is a great exercise to strengthen the glute med, which is a very strong and supportive muscle for your hips and back. Making sure you stack your chest, stack your hips. Knees are slightly forward of body, heels align with your buttocks. Keep your feet down for level one or level two, your feet come off and rotate your toes externally. Then you're gonna simply open, squeeze top of the glute and close. Exhale to open, <sighs> inhale to close. So if it's too much, just rest your feet on the mat. Now, every time you open that knee, I want you to get a little pinch, a little squeeze in that glute med without letting your hips rotate backwards. So it's like you're sandwiched between two plates of glass here. Nice big squeeze at the top, hold briefly, and release. So glute med, powerful, strong part of the gluteals, very important core muscle. So the stronger this is, the hip external rotator muscle, the stronger and more supportive your hips are, which is helpful for your lower back. So this is a very important exercise here. We're doing 10 more of these, and then we'll be done on this side. Should be feeling it right there in the upper glute. If you're not feeling it, get a little bit more concentration in your workout by focusing, lifting a little bit higher, squeezing, holding, and release. Good, five more of these. Good, powerful core muscle. Feel that as it strengthens your whole body. All right, when the hips are strong, when the glutes strong and protected, lower back is happy, and then the whole body is happy. All right, everything works together in your body. Last one, you're gonna hold this one up, holding, holding, and release. Awesome job. In transition, give your body what you need. So maybe a shoulder roll, whatever you need, and let's change sides. So the hips and the lower back are neighbors, right? So when one area is compromised, the other area is gonna be compromised. So we're strengthening the hips here, the external hip and glute rotators. Lift your heels, toes out, stack your hips, open, hold, and close. So notice we're moving really slowly here. The more slowly you move, more muscles you engage, more muscle recruitment means more results in the body, more change, more strength, more stability, more foundation, lots of benefits. 
So keep your hips stacked, keep the chest open, squeeze, hold, and release. That feels good, right? To strengthen these foundational muscles that are working for us all the time in our daily movements without even thinking about it, but we need to strengthen them so they can work for us. Synergizing your happy body. That was 10 right here. All right, you have one more set of 10. Make sure you get that pinch and squeeze at the top. Should be feeling it by now. If not, more focus, more concentration. Don't let your hips open, perfectly stacked. Squeeze, hold. Amazing. You're gonna feel so strong after this workout. Strengthening those very foundational muscles to your body. Open, hold. Five more of these, big strong out breath. And down, and four, squeeze, hold. Hold, yes, I'm feeling it, I hope you are too. And three, hold. Last thing for sideline, two more. And hold. Last one, nice little squeeze at the top, hold. And down, well done. Carefully come onto your knees. Bring your hands underneath the shoulders, knees under the hips. Then lift your belly to your spine and a nice big cat stretch. Tuck your pelvis, hold it there. As you maintain that nice round spine, push your hips just halfway back. Then a flat spine to rock forward, shoulders over wrist. Repeat, cat stretch, round spine, push hips halfway back, feel that gentle release in lumbar. Flat spine, coming forward, shoulders over the wrist. Again, exhale, rounding the spine, tuck the chin, push your hips halfway back. Inhale, coming shoulders over the wrist. Let's do two more of these because these feel great. Inhale, back up. And last one, push your hips halfway back. And up, well done. We're going into pointers. So if you want to start basic, you're going to start by only lifting your right leg, right? You can just stay there or your left arm lifts as well, and you're just gonna hold here in this pointer. So steady your eyes to the same level as your fingertips. Lift your belly, lift your ribs, everything away from the mat, and squeeze the glute, get your arm up by your ears. You're just holding here. This is a great pose to strengthen paraspinal, so those are the muscles that support your vertebrae. Very important. Stay for one more breath. As you exhale, reset softly to the mat. Very good. Now the left leg extends. You can simply hold there if that's enough. Or opposite arm reaches up. So get your arm by your ear. Reach your big toe away from your hip socket. And feel as if my hands are on your wrist and your ankle pulling apart. But keep lifting your belly and your ribs away from the mat. Everything that's on the mat, push down. And feel how that brings more foundation to this pose. Lift the belly, lift the ribs, squeeze the glute. Keep breathing and stretching away, holding here for four, three, two. Reset softly. Back to the right leg, left arm up and just hold for four, three, two. Reset softly. Left leg, right arm, pointer, hold four, three, two. Reset softly. Keep this going, a few more of these. Great exercise to strengthen into those erector spinae. Holding, reset to the mat. Left leg, right arm, point your hold. And bring it back down to the mat. Let's do two more each side. Exhale to extend, lift the arm right up by the ear, squeeze the glute, reset to the mat. Left leg, right arm, push away everything that's on the mat. Keep belly lifted to the spine. Reset, one more each side. Exhaling up, holding. Inhale, lower down. Last one, exhale up and hold. Inhale, lower down. Good job. Let's come into a child's pose stretch, which is a great stretch for lower back. Knees wide, big toes touch. Reach your hands actively to the top of the mat. Maybe give it a little wiggle here. 
Now the next one, we're in a prone position. That means you're on your belly. So if you feel like you are in a current red zone in your back or inflammatory phase, this might not feel good. So if it doesn't feel good, know your body and just stick with those pointers, that last exercise. If you're okay with lying on your belly, come with me. Now glute activation is a really important part of your back rehab. So you're just gonna rest your forehead to your hands or lift your rib cage slightly. I want you to first squeeze your right glute. So bring all your awareness to your right glute. Then flex your foot, lift the leg up and hold. So glute activation, you're squeezing just your right gluteal. Then the leg lifts up, down, up, down. Proper glute activation. So what is glute activation? That's sending the message from your brain to your muscle. It's time to switch on. So bringing all of your awareness, all of your focus to the gluteal, or right glute switches on. And number 10, you're gonna hold it there, squeeze, release, left side, squeeze the gluteal first. From there, flex the foot, lift your leg, up, down. Don't rush it, I want you to feel it all coming from or initiating from your left gluteal. So squeeze that butt cheek each and every time Keep it switched on even as you lower. Okay, proper glute activation takes a lot of awareness, a lot of focus. But the more we can learn to activate and isolate the glutes, the stronger our hips are, stronger your lower back is. So it's directly related. Strengthen the glute, strengthens the lower back automatically. All right, number 10, you're gonna hold this one up. Holding, holding. Release. Now, if your spine needs a break, take one now. We're going to do one more set each side. Squeeze your right gluteal first. This time you're going to point the toe the whole time and lift, lower, point the toe. It's like your toe's getting stretched away from your hip socket. Your right gluteal switch on the whole time. Up and down. Exhale up. Inhale down. Don't overextend through the spine, keeping your pelvis tucked under. You have five more of these. You can also bring a towel right onto your hips and that will also help to prevent any overextension in your spine. Good, so right under the hip bones that stick out in the front, ASIS joint, that's where you'll put your rolled up towel if this begins to not feel good. Three more. Last two. Last one, you're gonna hold it up for a four, three, two, well done. Last thing, left gluteal, squeeze it, then we lift it up and down. Last thing here. So you're never turning that glute off, even as you lower, right? Proper glute activation, keep it on the whole time. And four, you just have 10 of these. And five. You might notice one side is stronger than the other. That's totally normal, but not healthy, right? So bring awareness, commune with your body. What does your body need to become more balanced? more restructured and more synergized. Last one, you're gonna hold this one up, nice big squeeze, three, two, well done. Let's come back into a child's pose and then we're gonna go into some stretching to stretch the muscles that tend to aggravate slash cause lower back issues. So here we are, we're gonna go into a hip flexor stretch first. So you're gonna bring your front leg forward, leg closest to me, push the back leg right back. Get off the kneecap, front knee and ankle are in alignment. Now you can use a little bench for support or just simply bring your back hand to your hip and then drop your hip down, hip flexor. If you feel like you're fighting this too much, like wobbling side to side, just hold on to a bench. Because here, it's really important to let the muscles relax. The more we relax into the stretch, the deeper the stretch is. So if you feel like your body's fighting it or struggling to keep balance here, just use a little bench or something to hold on to. Let's breathe. Inhale. Exhale, drop your hip down. Hip flexor release. This is going to help to take pressure off of your lower back. Why? Because when the hip flexor is tight, it creates anterior pelvic tilt or arching in the back or lordosis, which is a major cause of lower back issues, and a lot of people have tight hip flexors. So if this feels tight for you, I recommend you doing hip flexor stretches daily. 
You can stay even longer for this, but for the purpose of this class, we're gonna to move to the next stretch now. So if you wanna hold it longer, just pause the video. Next one is hamstring. So you're gonna simply shift back into a half split posture. If this doesn't feel good, just lie on your back and then just grab behind one leg for your typical hamstring stretch. From here, I want you to tilt forward from your hip, not your lumbar spine. So feel the difference. Forward flexion from hip socket rather than lumbar. Push your knee down, elongate through the back of the neck all the way down to the tailbone, and then just breathe. So as I'm talking, make sure you're breathing really deeply as that, again, sends a message from your brain to your muscles that it's okay to relax now. It's okay to just soften and let go of fear in the body, right? So just let go of fear as you come down into this nice deep release. Now this is another area that is typically tight in people that have lower back issues. Hamstrings, if they're tight, I guarantee you, almost guarantee you for anyone that has tight hammies that's putting pressure on your lower back. So this is another one if you're feeling tension here. Daily, daily deep stretching. All right, it's time to change sides. Again, if you feel like you need more there, take a little more time. The other leg now comes forward, making sure that knee and ankle are in alignment. First, the back knee, get it right off the kneecap. Again, if you're struggling with balance, feel free to stay or forearm to thigh and then gently bring your hand to your hip. Keep your body square straight ahead and then <sighs> gently pushing your hip forward. So again, if you feel any pressure in the lower back, you can even bring your arm up to the sky if that feels better. I like this one because I can actively drop the hip down with gentle pressure. Again, if it doesn't feel good, go into that modification that feels good in your body but also a little bit challenging, right? So that sweet spot where it's a little bit uncomfortable, but also feels very necessary in the body. So important in our deep stretching that we find that sweet spot, that area where the body's like, yes, I've been trying to tell you I need this. Relax the shoulders, keep your hips nice and square, breathing in, breathing out, drop your hips down. Good, hip flexor release, feel how that automatically helps the lower back to release. Let's stay for one more deep breath in and out. Hands frame your front foot and we're gonna come back again for that half split posture. Straighten front leg as you exhale. Push your knee down, push your lower back forward. So again, you're flexing from your hip, not your lumbar spine. Now the more you squeeze your leg straight, the deeper the hamstring you release. So sometimes we need to contract muscles to release muscles. So right here, you're contracting your quad, you're releasing your hamstring. Again, if your back doesn't like this, a good alternate hammy stretch is on your back and you can use a strap behind your foot or your leg and then just pull your straight leg in towards you. Breathing in and breathing out. A couple more deep breaths in and out. Once again, inhale and exhale. Now the last stretch is a doozy for your quad. So if it's too intense for your quad, just bring your mat up against your wall. If it's too intense, you're just going to lie on your side and go for the quad stretch there. If you're joining me, make sure you've got something soft to go under your knees. You might need a little stool or bench nearby and you're gonna bring your right knee flush up against the wall, and then the left foot is gonna come right in front. This is a very intense quad stretch. Again, if it's too much, lie on your side and just grab the top foot. Hand to thigh, other hand to your bench, or both hands to your thigh. Make sure both toes are in line with your hips, and then So wall quad stretch, this is very intense. A lot of people don't realize, just stay here and breathe with me as you bring your shoulders back, tuck your pelvis under. A lot of people don't realize that quad tightness directly affects hips and lower back. It's all connected, right? Quads are tight, pulls on your hip flexor, which pulls on your lower back. So a lot of people that have lower back issues have really tight quads and hip flexors. Let's breathe. Push against that thigh or stool and then push your shoulders towards the wall behind you. And make sure you're not feeling any pressure in your major joints, right? Your lower back, your knees, be conscious there. If you're feeling pressure, just back off a little bit or go to the modified quad stretch. You can always 
work up to this one when you're not in a flare-up phase. Let's stay for a couple more deep breaths. Inhale, exhale. Very intense, very effective. One more deep breath. Amazing. Let's change sides. Carefully come out of that. Very intense. All right, now the other knee. You want to bring the knee first, flush to the wall. Make sure you've got something really soft for underneath your knee. And then the other foot comes forward. Make sure you have ankle and knee in alignment, hands to your thigh, and then push against that thigh to come on up. All right, tuck your pelvis just slightly under, light pressure on that thigh, or again, you can use a stool nearby. Exhale as you push your shoulders to the wall behind you. And feel how that directly releases your hips, releases your lower back. Breathing in, breathing out, relax somewhere. So good. I know very intense, but this is going to really help compound this effect in your body of release. Right, so we release those major spots, the hip flexor, the quad, the hamstrings, all of those that play a major role in lower back issues. Let's stay here for just a couple more deep breaths. In and out. Once more, inhale and exhale. Well done, come out of that stretch. The last stretch we're gonna finish with is a supine twist. So we're gonna finish here on our back. So lie first on your side facing me. Let both knees drop towards me, towards your armpit. Stack your knees. The top hand or front hand presses your knees together. Back hand reaches to the back wall. Supine twist, I want you to actively press your knees together. Inhale. Exhale, breathe down your back arm. All right, so try not to just hang out the stretch. It's actually quite active. Think about squeezing your tummy muscles and squeezing your knees together as you exhale. Here we go, inhale. Exhale, press your knees together. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze your knees together. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze and press. Once again, inhale, exhale. Beautiful. Take some more time there if you like. You can just pause the video if you feel like your body needs more. If not, we're gonna change sides. But once you come back onto your back, realign your body. So lift your hips and land them so everything's realigned. And then bring the knees in towards your chest. Let the knees drop carefully towards the back wall. Use slow, careful movement. Then pick up your head and gently look away from your legs. Your hands, your back hand presses your knees together. Front arm lowers down towards the floor. Let's breathe. Inhale. Exhale right down your front arm. Close your eyes. Just let go of some tension here. Breathing in. Breathing out. Squeeze your knees together. So allow the chest to open and keep squeezing your knees together. Feel how that directly releases your lower back. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze your tummy. Good. Let's just take a couple more deep breaths here. Amazing. Feel free to stay a bit longer, or if you've had enough, just roll over to that side and help yourself back onto all fours. Push your hips back for one last child's pose. Stretching, reaching your hands actively to the top of the mat, hips back to your heels. Now come back to this workout often. Try to do it at least a few times a week to get out of that inflammatory phase. And then invite this workout at least once a week in your recovery phase because it's important to reconnect to these foundational muscles in your body. Now go with beautiful posture, beautiful realignment. So grateful you could join me. And I hope you enjoyed the best exercises and stretches for lower back pain relief, 30 minute Pilates for back pain. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, 
and share with friends and family. Have an amazing day.